I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I started an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. So I don't just make pottery, I make resources for other potters wanting to be more eco-friendly in their pottery practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about sharing everything I've learned along my eco-conscious pottery journey with you. And I'm so glad you're here with me. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the Oxa Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and in today's episode we're going to be talking about kiln schedules. So we're going to be talking about what is a kiln schedule and some kind of uh, crucial terms that are used in uh, when describing a kiln schedule. Um, so you can kind of like, you can kind of maybe if you see one in a book, you'll be able to like read it and you'll be like, right, I understand what's happening in that kiln schedule. Um, so basically a kiln schedule is um, a way of describing what the kiln is doing um, to the pot when it's like inside the kiln during a firing. So the kiln schedule describes the very beginning to the very end and all the different processes in between. So like, you know, the heating, the different times it's heated, it might be held at a certain temperature and then, it, you know, it's cooled for so long. So that entire process, that is the kiln schedule. So um, every kiln will have a kind of, you know, its own, say like type of kiln will have its own kind of kiln schedule but um say like for a gas kiln you know that might look different to if a potter was using like an electric kiln because they kind of like work in different ways they might heat in different ways they might heat you know at different rates or things so um the what i'm going to be talking about today is an electric kiln schedule um so that's the kiln that i use i have an electric kiln and electric kilns are fantastic to use um for pottery for potters to use they're cheap to run they're uh, very easy to um, use you can just kind of set them and go away <laughs> so you don't have to be managing them you don't have to be like adding wood you know to the kiln throughout the night uh, you know to keep it going to keep it at a certain temperature you don't have to be kind of you know burning any fuel getting all that fuel um, you know, they, you can run them off renewable energy. Um, they're so good. They've made pottery just, you know, incredibly convenient for potters because, uh, before that potters, you know, were having to pretty much like wood fire all their work, build these massive kilns and fire it with, with wood, you know, fuel, um, you know, and then came different kilns sort of like gas and oil kilns, um, you know, where other, other fuels were burned, but, um, electric kilns have been like such a fantastic resource for potters because they just make firing so much easier. So, um, so the way an electric kiln is kind of told what to do is by a kind of a small, um, kind of, Thing called a programmer which is um, plugged into the kiln so you can buy a kiln without a programmer um, but you do need really a programmer to tell the kiln what to do because otherwise that kiln won't it won't be able to know how much to heat for you know for how long it what doesn't know what you want it to do whereas the kiln programmer um, yeah, so it just sits on the side of the kiln in a little holder and you just plug it in. Um, and my kiln actually, like, you know, it said, uh, do you want to buy the kiln and do you want to buy the programmer as well? And I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> so I bought them both together and then I just plugged it in when it arrived. I plugged the programmer in and it just sits right next to the electric kiln. Um, and the programmer is like, it's kind of like a little computer. You can kind of, you can program different kiln schedules into it. So for example, the kiln schedule, so the amount of heating, holding, cooling, that will look different to, um, you know, in a bisque firing than it would in a glaze firing, so like a stoneware glaze firing, you know, and you can also program in an earthenware glaze firing if you wanted to do, you know, a bit, a bit cooler. Um, okay, so let's get on to like, you know, the description of an actual kiln schedule and the terms involved, just in case you like, if you see these terms, you'll be like, oh, now I understand what that actually means. Um, yeah, because <laughs> I didn't when I first started and I was like, I don't understand what this means. Um, so I just had to do like loads of reading and hopefully this will like save that for you. Um, so, okay. So there are, um, there are like four terms really that are used in a kiln um, sort of program, a kiln schedule. 
So um, the first one is um, called the segment. And this refers to like, if you think about like um, an amount of time and it can be divided up, say like into segments. So there might be like segment one, <laughs> and it might be like, you know, segment two. And that's exactly what it means in, in the kiln firing. It just means like one segment, you know, you're telling the kiln to do a certain thing, like heat a certain speed. And then another segment, you're asking it to do something else. It could be like, um, you know, the bit where it gets like uh, even hotter, even faster sort of thing. So, um, so kiln schedules are often divided into segments. Um, so in my electric kiln, I've got two segments um, and I can program each of the segments um, to do something different um, during the um, during the firing. I've just realized I actually have three segments because I have I have the, the first segment, the second segment, and then I have like a cooling segment at the end. So that's kind of like not really programmable. It's just cooling down naturally sort of thing. Okay, so different segments you can program different things to happen in each segment. Um, so and then another term that's used is the set point. And the set point is actually the highest temperature that the kiln will reach in that firing or in that segment. Um, so for example, um, if you think about like um, um, a stoneware firing, you know, a stoneware um, glaze firing, you might want that uh, the set point to be 1280 degrees Celsius. Um, and so everything you're asking the kiln to do is kind of like building up to that set point and then you might say to the kiln, okay, then switch off and then it will cool down naturally from that set point. So um, the set point, basically, if you think about it, is like the highest temperature um, that you want the kiln to go to. So different segments, you could program different segments, segments perhaps to have like a different set point. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, um, you're going to heat to a certain set point and then you're going to heat to another set point. So, um, yeah, so set point in a section could be the highest temperature you want the kiln to program to that um, in that section. So um, the next term that's used is the ramp speed. OK, ramp. <laughs> so ramp just means how um, how fast you want to heat the kiln. And so ramp is usually measured in um, you know degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. So for example, at the beginning of a firing, you might want it to um, heat up more slowly than um, than in when the firing kind of like gets going. Because at the very beginning um, of the um, firing, the pots might still have a bit of moisture in. And so if you heat it too quickly in that first section, you can end up um, exploding pots because they, um, the steam is getting released, you know, in, in the kiln like very quickly and that can explode pots. So I was reading about this the other day and um, it was saying that you don't want to um, have a ramp speed at the beginning of a kiln firing of more than 100 degrees per hour because if you have it more than 100 degrees per hour that's when you can have pots exploding that's just like too fast too it's too hot too fast basically so the ramp speed indicates um, the level of heating uh, per time so as you yeah it's usually measured in hours so it'll be degrees celsius or degrees fahrenheit per hour that's how the ramp speed is measured so for example it might be like 80 degrees it might be like 100 degrees um, later on in the firing it might be like 120 degrees per hour um, and that just tells the kiln right i i know i need to you know i need to increase the the temperature in you know 120 degrees in this next hour um you know by firing the elements um making yeah, making the kiln hotter by that amount in the next, in the next hour. Um, so that's the ramp speed. So ramp speed is really crucial. Ramp speed is really what you're kind of programming into the, you know, the kiln programmer um, to tell it, you know, how hot to make the kiln, how fast. Um, okay, and then, then the final term is called a soak. Um, and a soak refers to basically, if you think about, <laughs> if I was think about like a bath, like soaking, and basically what you're doing is you're soaking those pots 
um, for a certain amount of time in that temperature. So what you've told the kiln to do is keep the temperature the same for a certain amount of time. So you quite often you'll have a soak um, at the very top, at the very, the very set point of the kiln um, firing. And that's because like you really want that say like for example in a stoneware firing you really want the glaze to be you know actually like maturing in that time so for example i actually have a soak um so i have i have a ramp and then i have a soak at the very top um of the temperatures and so it's like 1280 degrees and i and i keep the the um celsius 1280 degrees celsius and i keep the pot um, at that temperature for 15 minutes and that just like melts that makes sure all the glaze is like really properly melting on the pot um, and then i ask the kiln to switch off and then it cools down naturally um yeah so that's the soak um I've actually tried to soak them for a bit longer um, because sometimes if you have glaze which isn't really sort of like melted properly it might need you know it might need like a higher temperature it might need just a little tiny bit longer soaking and um, what I found was like um, some of my pots were slightly under fired a couple of times so um, I tried to like increase the soak time so I increased it to kind of you really don't need long at all so I increased it to like 17 minutes and what I found was that actually started to burn out some of the color because I use like bare degree which is quite a gentle colorant um, and I found that it just kind of burned away a lot of the color so I think 15 minutes for me is like my optimum uh, soak time at that extremely high temperature and that allows the glaze to melt um, really nicely okay so let's go through an actual kiln schedule um, so you can actually see what one looks like um, so okay so basically um, this kiln schedule is from the book Eco-Conscious Pottery Glazing. Um, make your own pottery glazes with minimal harm to humans, animals and the environment. And that book is available on the Oxford Clay website um, and Amazon as well. And so, um, so the whole point of this book basically is to um, kind of give you some glaze recipes, some really kind of easy, um, simple glaze recipes. So there's 17 in there. But obviously, you know, as a reader of the book, you're going to need to know how to fire the glazes. Um, so let's talk about um, like a stoneware firing. Um, OK, so I'm going to go through the kind of the actual schedule um, and just tell you like how it works. OK. So the first segment, okay, segment number one is, has, has a ramp speed of 80 degrees Celsius per hour up to a set point of 200 degrees. Okay, so the kiln knows that it needs to be heating 80 degrees every hour up to 200 degrees and that's the first segment okay so once it's done that once it's reached 200 degrees um so you can you can see that's quite slow in the beginning the heating and that's just to make sure that like nothing explodes hopefully <laughs> um so um okay so that's the first segment and then this is the second segment of this firing okay so then I've asked it to um, heat the kiln 120 degrees Celsius per hour up to up to 1260 okay so that is the set point of this firing um, of this segment and this this entire firing so you can see that that's getting fired like hotter quicker um, and the kiln knows that every hour it needs to heat inside to 1,000 uh, to 120 degrees Celsius up to 1,260. I think I said 1,280 earlier in the episode. Sorry about that. I always get those two uh, mixed up. <laughs> no, I do get them mixed up when I actually fire. I just get them mixed up in my mind. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's the set point of a stoneware firing is 1,000. Well, my the one I've programmed into my kiln is 1,000. 260 so obviously like you know different clays might be fired hotter and you might be firing your clay to like 1280 <laughs> that's um that's you know or a porcelain sometimes they get fired up to 1300 degrees um okay and then i've asked the kiln the next part of the kiln schedule is that i've then asked it to soak um for 15 minutes at 1260 degrees celsius so um 
so that is the full schedule but then i've asked the kiln to switch off and then it cools down naturally so the full full schedule is basically from the very start to the very finish when you can like actually open um, the kiln um, to get to see your work but the last part of the kiln schedule the cooling part i haven't programmed that in i just cool the kiln naturally now actually some potters control the cooling of their work as well of their of their firings as well and that can stop um kind of glaze faults like you can get pinholing if you cool something too fast um you know you might get so, uh, some other glaze faults if you cool a kiln too fast so some potters actually do control the cooling of their kilns but um <clears throat> i don't I basically just um, ask the kiln to switch off and then it because it's so well insulated it takes about two days to cool down anyway so um, I don't feel like I need to control the cooling at all it will stay really hot for ages um, you know and cool down and I don't get any glaze faults from from that point of view so um, yeah um, okay so let's just go through a very a very um, quick example of a bisque firing just so you kind of understand the differences of a bisque firing and a glaze firing so the bisque firing, this will be done, you know, the first firing a pot would undergo before it's glazed. So this would be, um, so this for example is 80 degrees Celsius per hour up to 200 degrees Celsius. So very similar. Um, and then, then the next segment is then 120 degrees Celsius per hour up to 950 degrees Celsius um, with a 10 minute soak at 950 degrees Celsius. So you can see that's actually really similar. It's got the first segment exactly the same heating wise and the stoneware glaze firing. And then it's got, um, you know, the second segment is heated exactly the same rate. It's just that it's got, it gets to a cooler temperature than the stoneware glaze firing. And it only has a 10 minute soak. So the set point of that um, first segment would be 200 degrees. Then the set point of um, the next segment would be 950 degrees Celsius. The soak time 10 minutes and the ramp speed it's got two different ramp speeds in those two different um segments um yeah okay so i hope that's been like um you know interesting informative for you um, um yeah just a huge thank you for joining me on this episode um and you know it's kiln schedules like they might seem like incredibly complex but you're really only programming a couple of bits of information into that programmer you know if you're using an electric kiln um, you know, just to say as well, programmers can store loads of different programs. So, you know, um, uh, yeah, you can program, say, like, you know, um, loads of them, like bisque, a fire, you know, hot, hot, a very high fire bisque one, a low fire bisque one. You could have, you know, earthenware glaze, stoneware glaze, like loads of different, um, you know, different um, like schedules you can have in there. But um, yeah, if you wanted a couple of just like, you know, key ones, if you want a bisque and a stoneware firing, um, you can just you know take them from what I've said, or you can have a look inside um, the book Eco Conscious Pottery Glazing. Uh, yeah, oh, fantastic! Thank you so much for joining me, and um, I'll see you on the next episode. Until then, happy potting! Bye. <laughs>enjoyed that and you're interested to learn more about eco-conscious pottery head over to the oxford clay website which is www.oxfordclay.co.uk i can't wait to see you there